Now, more than 25 studies reported the link between physical exercise and the outcomes of COVID-19. But how much exercise do you need to have a better COVID-19 outcome? I'm Dr. Han, and welcome back to the Sunday video. In this video, I'm going to show you a new study in the American Journal of Preventive Medicine that gave us a recipe for this secret weapon. And if you are like me, who is working on getting more into shape this year, here is another reason for you to get started. So let's take a walk together. The many studies have shown that physical exercise can lower the risk of getting very sick from COVID. For example, a BMJ study published in March 2022 linked regular physical activity with a lower risk of infection, hospitalization, and death from COVID. Now let's get to the study that was just done at Kaiser Permanente in California. The study suggested that almost any amount of exercise can lower the risk of severe or fatal COVID, even in high-risk patients. Like those with high blood pressure or other cardiovascular diseases. Long before the pandemic, Kaiser Permanente routinely asked their patients two questions since 2009, and the first question would be, on average, how many days per week do you engage in moderate to strenuous exercise, like a brisk walk? And number two, on average, how many minutes do you engage in exercise at this level? The patients can choose from zero to seven days, and between zero, ten, twenty, thirty, forty, fifty, sixty, nineteen, hundred, twenty, and more than hundred fifty minutes for their answers. Patient who completed at least three of these assessments in the two years before infection were included in the study. With this qualification, 194 and 191 Kaiser adult patients who tested positive for COVID between January 2020 and May 2021 were included in this study. The study the population was divided into five groups. Let's call the first group Group A. They are always inactive, having 10 minutes or less per week of exercise. The second group, Group B. They are mostly inactive. They have at least exercise between 10 to 60 minutes per week. The third group, Group C, is some activity with 60 to 150 minutes of exercise per week. And the fourth group, Group D, are consistently active with about 150 minutes of exercise per week. And the last group, Group E, that are always active with more than 150 minutes of exercise per week. The study also looked at other factors such as age, gender, ethnicity, body mass index, history of hypertension, and cardiovascular diseases. They find that every level of physical exercise can provide some level of protection against severe COVID-19 outcomes. Those who were consistently inactive, our Group A patients, who had less than 10 minutes of activity per week before getting COVID, were 91% more likely to be hospitalized and 291% more likely to die from the disease than active patients. Our group E, who had more than 150 minutes of exercise per week, that is about 30 minutes of brisk walking five days a week, had the best outcomes. Now I know that not everyone can have the time to do a lot of exercise, but even a 10-minute walk per week was associated with a better COVID-19 outcome. According to one of the latest WHO figures, one in four adults doesn't exercise enough. This is a serious problem as we are seeing severe COVID outcomes trending up in the older population. And the vaccine alone only provides modest protection against infection in all age groups. Now, this Kaiser Permanente study certainly has its limitation. They look at COVID outcomes before vaccines were widely available, so it could not assess if exercise improved COVID outcomes with vaccination. It also did not look at the impact of repeated COVID infection. Now, but even with these limitations, the study provides good evidence 
that as little as 10 minutes of exercise per week is better than none. Now you may argue that this study's result is not surprising at all. We have already seen that patients with metabolic diseases are associated with a higher risk of severe COVID outcomes. Now that is true, um, but as a nation, we tend to focus so much on medical interventions. Well, let's boost every, uh, every few months or let's start drug therapy early. Well, we have often um, forgotten something called proactive medicines, where we optimize nutrition, exercise, and sleep to prevent illnesses. Now, I think um, pharmaceutical companies have really cultured or cultivated the American people to turn to drug therapies for decades with strategies such as direct-to-consumer advertising and heavy lobbying to our political leaders. Now, I definitely, I definitely think it is time for a change okay, of this culture. But, so one last thing I want to bring up is that although exercise can better COVID outcomes, it is before COVID infection. Remember that after you are infected, it is important that you get enough rest and only return to exercise gradually after a full recovery. Now, this is also uh, true even if you had a cold or a flu. Exercise too early can be dangerous regardless of your fitness level. Now, if you are in the middle of a respiratory illness, don't stress your body too soon. I think this video is about 10 minutes now. It's kind of cold for me here. But if you are watching this on a walk in a warmer weather, or indoor on a treadmill, um, you've done your minimum exercise of the day. Um, so remember just to keep it up. All right, you have a good start. <laughs> now before we wrap up, okay, I want to tell you that uh, I have um, restarted my exercise uh, routine after my uh, severe cold since Thanksgiving. So I started that past week and I've been uh, keeping records on my Instagram account. If you're curious, uh, I have links to my Instagram account. You can check it out, but uh, very little things right now. Uh, that's all for this week. This is a very different video, certainly. And thank you very much for watching. And I hope to see you again next week or next video. All right, take care. Bye.